the 2 cm flak firling was introduced in 1940. The term firling literally translates to quadruplet and refers to the four 20 mm auto cannon constituting the design. The flak firling weapon consisted of quad mounted 2 cm flak 38 AA guns with collapsing seats folding handles and ammunition racks. The mount had a triangular base with a jack at each leg for leveling the gun. The tracker traversed and elevated the mount manually using two hand wheels. Each of the four guns had a separate magazine that held only 20 rounds. This meant that a maximum combined rate of fire of 1400 rounds per minute was reduced practically to 800 rounds per minute for combat use, which would still require that an emptied magazine be replaced every 6 seconds on each of the four guns. The gun was fired by two pedals each of which fired two diametrically opposite barrels. The effective vertical range was 2200 meters. It was also used just as effectively against ground targets as it was against low-flying aircraft. The flak firling anti-aircraft system could be easily mounted onto any self-propelled mount. The Sonderkraftfahrzeug or Special Purpose Vehicle 7 half track became the first basis of the weapon. This model was called Sonderkraftfahrzeug 7 1. The production started in February of 1940 and continued until December of 1944, by which time approximately 800 were manufactured. This made the Sonderkraftfahrzeug 7-1 one of the most numerous self-propelled anti-aircraft guns of the German army had at the disposal. The vehicles were used in the flak companies and flak batteries. These were used to accompany the army divisions or to protect important locations and installations like airfields. Two or three 7-1 vehicles formed a platoon. After 1943, the three-vehicle platoon was also added to the HQ unit of each Panzer battalion. This gave the tank units their own anti-aircraft support without having to rely on other units. These vehicles were very well suited to accompany the German Panzer formations, as they could keep up with the tanks. Also, they could deploy very quickly, immediately providing cover for the troops in case of an unexpected air attack. A towed AA gun would first have to be taken off its trailer and then be placed on its mounting, which would take precious time during the attack. Also, the Slaven slash one could withdraw quickly if the situation required, with little preparation. Their very high rate of fire made them a significant threat to enemy ground attack aircraft. Besides their potential to destroy the attackers, their presence could make enemy pilots hesitate or rush their attack runs, thus lowering the chances of success. In the ground fire support role, the flak feeling could be a serious threat to enemy infantry and unarmored vehicles due to its high rate of fire and high caliber. Also, when using AP rounds, the flak firling could penetrate light armored vehicles such as armored cars or the shields of an anti-tank gun. 
When used in this role, the vehicle was driven in reverse, with the gun having a free field of fire towards the enemy. This did offer the advantage of a quick gateway if needed. Also, the armor of the vehicle was definitely insufficient for the task, with the crew members, especially the loaders, being protected only by the gun shield. The most famous occasion in which a Sonderkraft Fahrzeug 7-1 was used was during Operation Market Garden in September of 1944. Then a vehicle from an SS unit used its guns to fire at airdrop paratroopers while they were still in the air, but also at the supply gliders. I hope you enjoyed this episode and to make sure you don't miss my future work, please make sure you are subscribed to my channel and press the bell notification button. Thank you and see you in the next video.